Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Robert Roy. Hope you are all having a wonderful day today. Let's go ahead and make sure you can all hear me. If you would go ahead and type the number one in the questions box, one for yes, two for no. Uh, I don't think I'll get a whole lot of no's right now, but as we go through the presentation, uh, that's the syntax we'll use, one for yes, two for no. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you so very much for that participation. Good participation. Uh, it always, always excites a, a coach when they see that people are participating. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our, our disclaimer. Basically, it says that I am not an advisor and cannot legally tell you to buy or sell a stock. It is against the law. The SEC, which is the Securities and Exchange Commission, requires you to be licensed in order to do so. I am not and I do not want to be. So if you find a candidate, an indicator, a trade setup, something, anything you like here today, my suggestion is you paper trade it first before you ever put one penny of real money into the trade setup or indicator, and then and only then would you do so if it fits your own personal risk profile and risk tolerance. Now, keep something in mind. Because I am not an advisor, that means I am not under trading restrictions. That means that I may choose to enter or exit the trade at any given time without prior notice. All right. I well, hope you're all having a great trading day today. It has been a, a decent day, not a strong runner in a direction, but they're having a couple of positions that have made some really nice moves today. So hopefully you're able to catch some. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about, as we, as I mentioned, market moving. Let's talk about what makes the market move, right? What are some of the things that make the market move? So things like geopolitical decisions. Anytime the president of the United States or, you know, Draghi speaks or, you know, there's concerns over North Korea or in the chemical warfare going on in the Middle East and so forth. All of these things have or can have a dramatic effect on the marketplace, right? So geopolitical decisions, any conversation there that can be deemed as very positive and or negative can have an effect on our market. Rumors. The expression is, and if you don't know this, write it down and you need to live by it. Buy on rumors, sell on fact. Rumor has it that Microsoft will be selling their stock to Apple. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? The answer is yes. It's either a good thing or a bad thing. It depends. Did they pay too much for it? Right? Can Bill Gates go and compete still with, with Apple at that point? But that's a rumor. You buy the rumor. Hey, psh, psh, don't tell anybody. Shh, Microsoft's going to be bought out by Apple. That's the rumor. You buy the rumor. When the announcement comes out, you sell on the fact. The announcement's out. It's going to gap where it goes. It may run higher. You may get a, a further run up. But more times than not, we find that the overreaction to that news on the initial pop was too much. Okay, so buy on rumors, sell on fact. Oil. Oil is a phenomenal trading vehicle. If you are not focused on oil and trading oil, I highly suggest that you look at it as a trading vehicle. Uh, it is not, let me say this, it is not for the faint of heart. But if you can learn, there are some positions you can trade that put very little money at risk. If you can learn how to trade some of those, I think it's great. Now, with that being said, the price of oil is really what I'm focused on. Price of oil going up, oil going down. If oil wells are being you know, taken over by ISIS and they're controlling that, that oil, uh, the president of the United States saying that we're going to run a, a pipeline from Canada into the U.S., right? All of those big positive things for the U.S., now, economically, you may not, uh, for the, not economy, but for the environment, rather, it may not be the best thing. We're disturbing this. We're doing that. We're fracking. We're offshore drilling. I get all that. We're talking from a market standpoint, not whether or not you feel it's ethical to make those investments or not. Uh, to me, you make the investments in whatever you feel comfortable in. I like choosing oil as a vehicle. I like news on oil. And if you are trading oil, by the way, there are the energy stores report that comes out every week. You want to know about those reports before entering into those types of trades. But oil can and will move our marketplace. Gold. There's gold and then there are hills. So when we look at gold, I get questions all the time right up to when gold was at its highest high or right near it. With the pastor from our church calls me and says, Rob, what do you think about gold? I've, you know, I've got a little bit of cash put on the side. This guy keeps calling me. He wants to invest. He's talking about it's going through the roof. And I said, Father, I think it might be a little bit high right now, but you know, that's really going to be your decision. But I, I don't. I think it's gone too far, too fast already. And, and hence, if you look at the chart, you could see that it dropped off from there. 
dramatically from where it was and has not recovered since in the last couple of years. With that, gold is still a flight to safety. And the reason gold has not taken off is we have not had that bearishness in the market, that fear that jumps out there that says, ooh, there's so much happening in the market. The world is coming to an end. We'll never recover again. When that mentality comes back, the flight to safety, and here's the, the trade, folks. You pull your money or people, which you should consider if you're not trading it, just investing it, pull out of the mutual funds, pull out of stocks, and they invest in gold. And that flight to gold tends to have a, a has a tendency to rise the price of gold of gold itself. Not necessarily gold stocks, not companies that mine gold. I'm talking about the actual physical gold. The U.S. dollar. Dollar's up. The yen is down. Uh, dollar's down. The Canadian dollar or the Aussie is up. I mean, all of these concerns. But the bigger thing for us, the U.S. dollar, is does have an effect on the market. I mean, I remember as a kid, my mom would say, I can't believe this year how expensive eggs have gotten or how expensive this year milk has gotten. I don't ever remember mom saying eggs, milk, bread, meat, cleaning supplies and everything else going up astronomically all at the same time. Everything went up. And today it seems that we're on the opposite path, that things are going up drastically. If you look at the path that you are on for most of us, most people that are here, most people you know, are on a path of you work for 40, 50 years and you collect a paycheck. And there's nothing wrong with that. Your boss gives you the paycheck. By the way, they take a percentage out right up front and they pay it to the government before you even get it, right? What you have left over, if you were to take and, and pay your bills and whatever you had saved, then you stuck it in a bank. And the bank right now today is paying a whopping one quarter of 1% for loose money, meaning a checking account, things that you could take in and out rapidly. Go and put it into a CD for a year or so, you might get 1%-ish, a little more, a little less, but right about there. Well, you put it in at 1%, cost of inflation is 3%. You're losing money on your saving of money alone. So the US dollar has a dramatic effect and is becoming worse and worse on an individual these days. And we, we don't even realize it. People don't even see it. There's so many things of how your mutual funds are affected, how the dollar is affected, how gold is affected. All of these things, all these components, pricing, the GDP, all of these things, even the, the U.S. being the standard or the clearing currency of the globe, we're no longer uh, the sole clearing currency of the globe. Uh, there are other currencies right now that are insisting on clearing in order to do business with other countries. So, And then things like the Bitcoins of the world are going to jump in and really uh, lay havoc in there. And if you haven't seen it already, they are doing it. So it's question time. So remember, I said real simply when we got started, one for yes, two for no. I don't want to make this complex. It's real easy. Just drop in a one for yes, a two for no uh, for those types of questions. These are going to be A, B, C, or D, right? So make sure you read through all four of the answers or let me read through them before you go ahead and type in your answer. So how does the market move? And I'm talking about generally. Is it always fast? Is it always moderate? Is it always slower? Is it D, all of the above? So is it A, B, C, or D? All right, a lot of quick answers going in there. Papa Tom, good to see you, sir. Excellent. You all got it. It's all of the above, right? The market doesn't move one way. Now, does the market go in cycles? Yes. Right now, we're in a slower cycle. We're in that summertime blues, the dog days of summer, whatever you want to call it, right? We are slower right now than we have or tend to be the rest of the year. Now, if we look at the next question, individual stocks. Do they move fast, moderate, slower, all of the above? I think you got the answer already for this one fairly easily. The answer is all of the above. And I don't even mean it could be just pick a stock. If you just pick Apple, think of it. Can Apple move fast one day, slow another, moderate the next, and then be all three of them fast, slow, and moderate in the same day? Yes, all over the place. But you also have stocks that are very slow movers right now today and other ones that are very fast movers today and it doesn't mean it's the norm even for them it's just how that stock is trading right now so point being is there is no one size fits all you need to learn about the stocks you need to learn about the individuals you need to learn the chart patterns you need to learn how to trade the various components of what you're looking at right now what i'm trying to do here is open your eyes up that things aren't as simple as the picture might have been painted 
of, oh, trading's a breeze, anybody could do this. I believe anybody can learn it. I don't believe anybody can do it. Anybody can do it is give me a baseball and I can throw the baseball. I can do it. Yep, I didn't say it was going to be perfect, but I can throw it, right? Tell me you're going to trade the market effectively. It takes a little bit more than just doing it, right? It takes the practice and the commitment, the education, the dedication. So let's talk about what makes some of the stock moves. What makes some stocks move? Do some move faster than others? We've already said that, yes. Why? What might be some of the reasons that a stock will move faster than another? Well, current news is one example. Technical patterns, notice it's in a different color. I am a technician. I am a technical trader. I am, I am what is known as a harmonic trader. I trade with nature. I trade the human emotions that you have in your trade and you don't even know that you have. Just out of curiosity, one for yes, two for no, uh, are any of you trading harmonic patterns now, meaning things like Fibonacci's, pivot points, maybe some of, not all, some of the Elliott waves, some GAN, one for yes, two for no. Okay, mostly twos. We got some, so Mac said yes, uh, Nadia said yes, Lisa said some, okay? All right, excellent. Most of the answers coming through are twos. Most traders are not. When you learn how to overcome the emotion of not only your emotions, and when I say that, I be careful. I've not yet overcome my emotions in trading. I still get emotional. It's my money, right? Fear and greed are still the prominent emotions that we tend to deal with. What I'm talking about is learning to understand how the emotions of the average trader work and being able to place trades even when conventional wisdom says that's the wrong trade to take. And what I mean by that is when the market is coming crashing down and I see a slimmer of hope at a certain price point and I get a bounce, start to get a bounce there, that's the place I take the trade where the rest of the world is still selling, where I take the bullish trade. And that is because I understand repeatable, predictable patterns that happen over and over and over again. Uh, economic reports. Now, when it comes to economic reports, I said before about the energy stores, right? Unemployment reports as an example. Uh, housing reports. Uh, today, one o'clock, Who's what's going on at one o'clock today? The Fed is speaking, right? We know about those economic reports. We can trade around those. So let's break them down a little bit. When we talk about current news, what are we, what are we looking at? Earnings, that's a known news. Those are an easy one. Uh, we can trade those. Upgrades and downgrades. When Merrill Lynch comes out and says, we are upgrading Microsoft to our focus list from our hold list. So they were telling their clients to hold them, and now they put them on the focus list or the buy list or the overweight list, depending on what your broker might call it or that broker might call it, where basically they're saying, we told you before it was a hold, and now we really think you need to add it to your portfolio. The CNBC effect is a great one. I love, and you don't see a lot of them, but we had all of the, uh, oh goodness, that I can't remember the name of it, the white powder that they were shipping in the, the mail. Uh, it was a white pestis. Um, anyway, whatever it was, when it was the poison that they were, the toxins they were shipping in the mail, the poisons, and then all the, the government's mail were going through scanners to test for it and so forth, right? I remember uh, anthrax. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I knew someone would type it in. Um, anthrax. <clears throat> and it was all this freaking out going on. And I remember uh, Joe Kernan on CNBC comes, uh, comes, Actually, yeah, I think it was Joe. Comes running out with a piece of paper in his hand. Now, normally they triple check everything before they read it. And they read it right on the air, right hot off the press. It wasn't triple checked. And he said that, you know, guys, this is brand new. We're still confirming the facts, but this is what we're hearing. Uh, and I watched the market come crashing down. And as soon as it was confirmed, I watched the market crash even further uh, through that news, right? That's the CNBC effect. Or here's a great one. Folks. We're going to be right back after this commercial break. And when we do, there's a pharma, pharma tech company or pharmaceutical company that is exploding today. We'll tell you who that is when we get back. And you're trying to search charts, find news, go crazy. You come back and, uh, and they had said, oh, it's up $5 right now. And then they go to commercial break. Come back and they say, wow, that stock is up $10 right now. Yeah, no kidding. But if it was up 5 I, before the, if we look at it this way, I'm not a big fan of saying numbers. It's easy to see it. If the stock was right there, right, and let's say it was it closed here, whatever those numbers were, 
this was the open and that's where it happened uh you know an hour later so this is 10 o'clock this is the price and then that's when they announced it on cnbc and then the stock at 10.03 jumps up here right that's all of the the cnbc effect right in there well, what happens over the next hour or two is the stock tends to go back right about where it was before they announced it. So again, understanding the effects and how they work in the market and what they do, CNBC is just one news type that you can deal with in there. When you look at earnings, I'm going to venture to say that most of you do not trade earnings the way that they should be traded. If any of you remember a you know trades being taught like a strangle, a company that I used to teach for, we called it a chicken trade. Chicken because you bought the call and the put, you traded both sides. The problem is the market makers are jacking implied volatility up so much right now. They are overvaluing the options dramatically and you cannot take advantage of it. I teach a strategy in Monster Market Movers where we trade these after the announcement comes out. And I'll show you an example of one in a moment. But after the announcement comes out, not before the announcement. So we watch because usually what happens, and I'll let you in on a secret for it, if they overvalued it prior to the earnings announcement, now you bought an option for six dollars your stock went up 20 bucks and the option's worth four You're like what 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 happened where'd my call option go why didn't it go up i don't understand i need to sell and get out of my position well the market makers know this so what do they do they suck the implied volatility out of the options and drop it down even lower than it's supposed to be and now you're stuck selling your option back to them at a price lower than it's valued at when it was overvalued when you first bought it you're underwater no matter what and they know it they got you, period, the end, right? I teach a strategy in Monster Market Movers where we go through and you trade these after the announcement, not before the announcement. So as an example, here's an earnings announcement that came out. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see these are one-minute candles, right? We go from 9.33 to 9.38 between these two bars. There are five bars inside of there, right? Here was our closing price way down here. We gapped up all the way to here on the open, and we came down to a key level. And we'll talk about those key levels tonight at Monster Market Movers. But we came down to this key technical entry point, and we entered this position at $4.25. Well, we made our move up. We made our move up. Well, we pierced through the moving average. We came up, pierced, came back. Came da, 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 da. Okay, here we go. We wound up down here is where we get taken out of the trade. And that's at $6.95. Well, that is $2,700 just on those contracts for the earnings. Now, if you only did one contract, that'd be $270. You put in $425 to make $270. No matter how you slice it, uh, $425, half of that would be two and an eighth. You're better than 50% on this position. No matter how you slice it, you had a really good trade. One contract, three contracts, 30 contracts. It's a really good trade no matter what it is. Now, other technical patterns, double tops and bottoms, head and shoulders patterns. If you're not familiar with those, they're very standard technical patterns in the market. So here's a double top or what's known as an M. Here's a double bottom or a W, right? Here's a head and shoulders pattern. Right. Each one of those patterns has a different method or a different way to trade them. Can anybody tell me what the M pattern, what that letter M stands for? It's a technical term. Right? What does that M pattern stand for? And Yardinia, Noah, Papa Tom, ah, Papa Tom, you're sneaky there. All right, Lisa, Linda, right? You, you all had the same answer for the, another name for a double top, good Marcus, uh, is murder. M stands for murder. But here's the thing. That's only until you learn how to trade it. Then, and there may be more, and if I miss it, guys, it's just because they're scrolling by so fast. I know Papa, Tom, and Marcus, uh, and then you know, Dean, you put it in as well, put in a second answer there of money. Right? When you learn how to trade these guys, it, the, the double top doesn't mean murder. It means money. Because when that pattern presents itself, even though it's going down, you learn to recognize it and, more importantly, how to trade it. That's the key. I love the technical patterns of double tops and bottoms. Here's one. Right? So we made a move up, and there's our first top. Now, if all of this here was hidden, 
right? And you just saw that, you would not have any clue that it was the beginning of a double top. It came down and formed what is called the neckline when it bounced. You still can't tell it's a double top. And then it rolls, pulls back up and starts to roll over. And I'm going to grab a pen and highlight it here, here, here. Now, right there, we start to go, oh, is that a double top? It looks like it might be, but it's not until we break the neckline. So there's our entry right there. So we get in at $7.60. This is not an overnight trade. I'm sorry, this is not an intraday trade. This is an overnight trade, right? So what does that mean to us? We're buying this position, holding on to it. So we buy the uh, option at $7.60. It was a full monthly option, full month of time. And we exited at $16.70. Right? That gives us $9.10 per share or $9,100 on our double top pattern on murder or money right it really comes down to what you see and how you take advantage of that pattern okay some of these patterns that i have shown you are some of my favorite things to trade there are a few others yet which we're going to talk about but they are patterns that are amazing technical formations i mentioned this a little bit fibonacci's pivot points they are great trade setups when you learn how to trade them they are the highest probability of every set up I have ever seen hundreds of patterns not all work but I have gone through testing hundreds of patterns for reliability and I've not seen the reliable high reliability high repeatability and high predictability in a pattern like you will find in Fibonacci patterns and pivots now just like anything else you know riding a bicycle yeah it's pretty simple unless you're trying to stand on the seat and ride the bicycle at the same time you got the bicycle, you're riding it, or you call it riding, but it makes it a little bit harder. You've got to have the right formation, right? You've got to be sitting on the bike. You're holding on to both handlebars. You've got your hands on the brakes just in case or right by the brakes. You're pedaling the bicycle. You're keeping the wheel straight. Same thing with Fibonacci and pivot patterns. They're critical to your success is that you do them right. So here's a technical pattern. This was an actual pivot point. Right? We closed right here the previous day, the gray boxes yesterday. We opened, it's a little hard to see, there's a little dash right there, right? That was the opening price. We pushed up into a pivot level. We pulled back, and at 840, we bought this intraday option on this $400 stock. And these, once again, are one-minute candles in here. And I really want you to be able to see every move of it, right? So we make our pullback, we make our pullback. We get down here, right to this point, right about here is where we exited the trade at $11.60. So on 10 contracts here, that's $3,200. Now, if you only did one, you'd be $320. Once again, I mean, it's not a bad number whatsoever. 320 bucks on 840, what is that? You're better than 30%. Better than 30% on the trade. I like it a lot. And then there are so many more. We cover all of these in Monster Market Movers, guys. Every single month, we go through them. It's a new list of candidates we deal with every month. So let's look at some recent trades. Guys, normally I go through and I start looking at, when I teach this, I start looking at, let's look at some trending stocks. Let's look at some channeling stocks. Let's look at some descending, you know, or trending down stocks, some Fibonacci stocks and so forth. I thought it would be a better use of our time today if we picked one pattern. And basically last month, I taught a monster market movers right here for Eric and his uh, students. I taught a monster market movers and that class was held 24th. Was when we did it, right? Nine to 11, one simple strategy. And I picked what I think is the selling stock. Rob, I ain't doing them. Do with that. Rob, how many could you possibly find? Well, last month, I think we found 50, 51 that were channeling. And, and I'm going to go over this in depth tonight in the workshop, but I'll show it to you guys here. So as an example, Dow, right? 526 was our entry. And I said five. 
before was our chart. If you, I put my mouse on it, you can see the crosshairs. If you follow straight down to the bottom of the screen, and I can't, or I can move my mouse. You see down here on my mouse is there's a date. It shows 5:24, right? The, the date, that tip bar will be in the the border, right? So right there is the day of the workshop. 5:26 was our entry. Why? Well, we gapped up right here. I'm not taking that trade. I needed to come back and bounce off of the lower level, the support level, before I take the trade, right? It gapped down and and went lower opened up slightly lower pushed up higher and there's the 26 there's our entry into this trade now i don't sell all my position at one time i scale out of half of the trade in the middle and we're going to go into we i actually taught this last uh no actually tonight in tonight's class There's a pattern of the month that I teach pattern that is pivot. It's something that I've created. You won't find it. Don't bother searching for it. If you do, please tell me because someone stole it. It's mine, right? 65 on five of the stock when we were at $64 and we made $1,056.25 on the second position. Uh, by the way, all of these were done with out of the mail on Tiffany's or the workshop. This is the day of the workshop. List day. Look what happened. Ounce, there's the entry. So we took the bullish entry one time. We took the right here, two trades. On this day, we took the bullish entry three trades here we took the bearish entry four trades and this is questionable because we never really got back to that support level so you may or may not be in that trade but four different times the exact same stock channeling that thing tiffany guess we're not talking about apple and google and baidu and netflix we're talking about tiffany's right a jewelry company so if we look, here's Tiffany down here. On Tiffany's, guys, we, you know, I don't have the totals. I just have the individuals. I didn't total them up by the each position. But you're talking about eight uh, and four, about 1,200 bucks each time we did the trade, somewhere around there. So 12, 26, uh, 12, 24, 30, 48. So just under five grand on Tiffany alone. But here's the when we look at it. Out of the money options were used here. I did 10 contracts of each. You don't have to. I sold five at the middle of the channel and I sold the other five just at support or resistance. So if we did 10 contracts right here, guys, on this line, if we did 10 contracts, we had a total profit of 29, uh, 26,946. And that's before commissions. So I'm going to say you guys are welcome to take $946 off of commissions. If you're paying anywhere near that, you're nuts and need a new broker but we'll pretend, right? We'll put that much away for commissions. We made 26 grand. If you only did one contract, you made $990. Still not bad, but you only had one exit. You got out in the middle. If you had two contracts, you made, look at the difference. You didn't turn from 1,000 to 2,000. You went from 1,000 to 2,700 on two contracts because you were able to scale out of that trade. Guys, these are just from the candidates that came out last month. Uh, what do we have? Two from 2119. These are 19 of the 50 that came out last month. I did not put on this list any stocks that we were in and had not finished. There are some from last month that we started and we've only taken our first exit. The second one hasn't happened. Even if it were to go against us after we took our first exit, we're still making money on the trade. And we had none of them up to this point. And I put this list together uh, three days ago. We have had none of them that had gone against us where it cost us money in those trades. Now, I'm not advocating that you won't have trades go against you. Not at all. You absolutely will have positions go against you. How much time did I buy you? Adina asked. I bought at least one full month of time. 
I didn't say what the meaning of a fibbit is, Lisa. Uh, that's why you didn't catch it. <laughs> uh, it's a Fibonacci. pivot. And, and tonight's pattern of the month is what I'll be teaching in Monster Market Mover. I scratched my head for years with that, Lisa, and I'd been a successful trader for a long time. It turned in the middle of nowhere. And one day while explaining something to a student, I get this epiphany as I'm looking at the chart, and I'm like, no, 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 it can't be that simple. And I go back and I did the back testing. And, and guys, I don't back test small, right? Just to give you an example, when I back tested moving average crossovers, I back tested four and a half million days. I don't back test small. Everything I do is large tests. So I went back and tested tens of thousands of days of trading, at millions of days, tens of thousands of, of different patterns, and found the tweaks to build this system out. The Fibbits work intraday as well as end of day. I like them better in the end of day, but they do work the intraday also. They work in both. But when it comes to identifying, and, and guys, I'm gonna teach them tonight for channels because of what's happened last week or last month on the 24th from the channels we had there. I'm gonna teach Fibbits on, I'm gonna teach Fibbits with Fibonacci's. And I have Fibonacci's as part of the bonus materials. There's four hours, four, four plus hours of prerequisite materials just in preparation for the workshop and you don't have to take it before the class it's nice if you can but not required but inside of there i teach you how to use the fibs i teach you the secrets of what i do with fibonacci's i'll teach the secrets of how to use them with fibonacci's tonight fibbits and then once you know how to use them with fibs guys i've converted them to channeling stocks i've done fibs on trending stocks and i've done fibs or fibbits i call them fibs but uh on the fibs. I've done fibbits on moving averages. I won't be showing the moving averages of the trends tonight. Those are two other lessons that are coming other months. Uh, I don't want to just, oh yeah, you can do this and show it and then walk away. You need rules and details and so forth. And, and I've built them out for all of them. Remember, when you build a setup, there are four primary phrases you must, not should, not can, not might want to think about, must have in a trade setup to be successful. What are your rules for identifying a candidate? What are your rules for entering the stock? How do you manage the or option, but how do you manage the position once you're in? And what are your final exit rules? Are you scaling in? Are you scaling out? Are you using a trailing stop? Are you uh, uh, scaling one way or the other, as I said, in or out? Are you moving your stops when you do? All of these rules need to be calculated before you say, I've got a system, right? So guys, the options investment was three times more if we use an in-the-money options, then for the out-of-the-money options. And these were the out-of-money premiums that we received. Now, what I mean by that is, yes, we would have made more money, not three times more. We would have made more money, but we would have had, a, had to have had a lot more at risk in the trade. And I would rather spend less on the trade than more on a trade whenever physically possible for me to do. All right. So with that being said, I mean, I showed you my results. What have yours been? What have your results look like lately? Have you had success in your trades? Have your trades been going against you? Are you getting the successes that you want to get? Are you working with a mentor who's kind of holding your hand and allowing you to walk through step by step in the process? Um, if you're not, you might be missing the boat a little bit. And I can tell you that from personal experience that had it not been for a gentleman named Vaskin Martin, who is a, a phenomenal trader that I met at my very first workshop who took me by the hand and said, kid, we're going to meet at my house once a, once a month in Manhattan. I lived on Long Island, uh, which is not bad. It's an hour and a half train ride each way. He said, if you want to come, you're welcome. So, of course I do. And we, I got to their house the first time and I was serious and I had studied and I knew my stuff as much as I could being in the market in a month. And after the meeting was over, he said to hang around a little bit. We talked and said, listen, I want to help you. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I've been doing this a long time. I trade the market. He showed me his portfolio. The guy lived in the pre-penthouse uh, in a building in Manhattan. He owned both of them. He bought the two pre-penthouses, which is one level below penthouse. His apartment was not the highest in the building, but it was the biggest in the building. Uh, he owned, owned textile companies. He made all kinds of money. I had nothing to offer him. He liked me for some reason and took me under his wing. And had it not been for him, I would not see the successes in the market that I do today. 
but it's because of what he's done for me. So having a mentor, having someone to help you with that is key and critical. And if you're working with one that's working out for you, awesome. If you're not, well, you know your next task is you need to work with somebody. So how do you get results like these? Let's take a look, right? Let's talk about what you're gonna learn at Monster Market Movers. First is how to identify the top trading patterns for today's market. I don't wanna tell you about a chicken trade or an earnings trade or things that used to work, but how do we trade things that happen right now? And basically what's happening is a big part of what's in Monster Market Movers is candidates, candidate selection. And I do the candidate selection. I don't ask you to do it. I find them for you. We will go over those candidates this evening. And I'll, I'll show you in a minute exactly how I do that. My own personal options process selection system. And I really suggest you take this. You can tweak it a little bit if you need to. If there are things you look at or, you know, my delta range is 65 to 85. If you're convinced that 60 to 80 is better or 70 to 90, you can make adjustments there. But I really would like to see you start with my system and build off of it. But you get my options process selection system. How do we pick the right option, right? How to capitalize on the trading candidates. These are the watch list, folks. Every single month you receive watch lists. Tonight's candidates are in excess of 200 candidates tonight you're going to receive. But they're not just a list that says here's stocks. It's a list of here's channeling stocks. Here are bullish trending stocks, bearish trending stocks, bullish and bearish thrusting stocks. Fibonacci patterns, pivot points, candlestick patterns, and the likes, moving average crossovers. All of those are going to be patterns that you receive tonight. All right. So that's the watch lists. What news to trade and what not to trade? We'll talk about how to trade in the market and how not to trade in the prerequisites. We go over all of that. All right. The strategy creation system, the four key components, I mentioned them already. You must master these four keys the systems i've built for you as part of monster market movers these keys are already done they're built into our systems already and so much more so what's included with monster market movers first thing is there are 12 bonus prerequisite videos it's about four hours long if you go to mastermind traders and you log in if you have access to monster market movers on the toolbar you will see monster market movers subscribers link or something like that bonus materials, when you log in, you'll have each of the various 12, hour, 12 different videos, four hours of videos, along with the manuals that go with them. But these are, these are guys, I used to te teach this stuff in Monster Market Movers, and we've got down to now where you go through this on your own, ask all the questions you want at Monster Market Movers about them, and we really go through candidates at Monster Market Movers. I'm trying to set you up for what you can trade next week, or next day, actually. There's two hours of powerful trading education. That's tonight, 9 to 11. I have done this where I'm teaching them now on a monthly basis with Eric's group and, you know, with Mastermind. And we teach them once a month. This, And I'll announce when next month is tonight. But that's on top of the four hours you already received in the prerequisites. The workshop manual, guys, this is where our candidates are listed. And they're broken up by section. So there'll be a Fibonacci section, uh, channeling, bullish and bearish. Uh, or channeling, trending, bullish and bearish. And we take those and break them down even further with an addendum manual. So what will happen is tonight the market closes at four. So sometime after five o'clock, I will spend an hour and a half to two hours going through candidates, again, finding ones that are setting up now. So channeling is a great example. Do I have channeling stocks that are near support? And do I have ones that are near resistance? I'll break those out. And they'll go on a new list. I will get that list uh, to Lisa in the office sometime today. She's got to format it and go through some things on her end and get it published. You will get it. I don't know if it's there by the start of the event, but it's going to be pretty close to it if it's not uh, to that. Because once we're going, Lisa already has it, and she just needs a little bit of time to format it. But you should have it done before the workshop is over tonight, before Monster Market Movers is done. And what I've done is instead of you saying, well, I have to look at 200 different stocks. Yeah, no, actually, you don't. You're going to look at seven stocks that are channeling, at four stocks that are trending, at three candlestick patterns. You will have all of that broken out for you so you already have cut through the red tape of what to look for. I can't give you stocks, all of them, that are ready to trade tomorrow. And it would make no sense if I did. Because if I were to do that, what would you do on Wednesday or Thursday? 
you're done. That's it. We gave you one day of candidates and, and it's over. I give you some watch lists of patterns that are setting up and you just look at those stocks on a daily basis and watch the ones that are meeting your criteria. You could set alerts and have it notify you when a criteria is met as well. The current Fibonacci video, I recorded this one yesterday. There's a hundred plus Fibonacci stocks on our list. I went in there and I recorded the video of those Fibonacci candidates. And basically what I do is I read the symbol off and I switch and I go to the next chart and I may give some notes on it saying, this one has a Fibonacci four step setting up. This one is a Fibonacci channel and, and such a zero line breakout. And then those are the ones that are wind up showing up on the addendum list tonight. But then you can pause the video at every chart and you can duplicate the Fibonacci's on there. And tonight I'll be showing you actually how exactly the software that I use, how I do that, how you can do that and, and so forth. It's really very simple to do once you understand the process. Right. And then you have 30 day access to the recording of the live event and the bonus material. So even if you can't be there live tonight, it doesn't matter. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity. When we go back here and pull in this spreadsheet and see a 20, almost $27,000 profit, number five here, almost $27,000 in profit, or one contract, $2,700 in profit, uh, I like it. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the opportunity for that. So I would not want to miss this if I were you, no matter what. You definitely would want to take advantage, even if you can't be there tonight. You get it recorded for 30 days. All right. So who should enroll? Guys, every level of trader. If you're brand new, just getting started, I'm going to help cut you through some of the minutiae and get you started quicker. If you've already done some of the minutiae and you're more of the intermediate trader, I'm going to help expedite your identify, enter, manage, exit skill set that will help get you to the, the end goal much faster. And if you're already an experienced full-time trader, I will teach you trade setups and hand you candidates that are quality candidates. I have a, a friend of mine who's a phenomenal trader, and every once in a while I'll get a phone call that says, hey man, I did some analysis and came across some candidates I really liked. Are you interested? I mean, how proud am I to say, well, no, I'll do it myself. Like, please and thank you in the same sentence. Goodness, of course I want to take them. As an experienced trader, guys, you're just going to add my trade setups to what you do. And if, let's say you trade four setups now, and each setup nets you 50 grand a year each. So you got 200 grand a year of income trading. Not a bad income. And I can teach you one other income generating strategy that will net you another 50 grand. Do you really not want it? Of course you do. If you're a business person, you do. If you're proud, maybe you don't. Well, I'll do it myself. It's not about doing it yourself. It's about learning how to do it the right way, not my way. So Monster Market Movers, when is it? Guys, it is tonight, June 27th from 9 to 11 p.m. And that is Eastern time. You'll get a link just like you did for this workshop to enroll. It is online re and recorded for 30 days. So even if you can't be there, you have access to it. It's with me, your trading coach. Uh, your normal investment, folks, is $249. Your discount in this is $50. Right, which makes your investment $199 for this event. Now, Lisa put a link uh, into the chat box. You'll see that. Actually, I just clicked on it. Let's see. Let's open it up right there. Right, so it's right here. Right, it's what it is. So by all means, if you are not registered for tonight's workshop, you need to be. You should be getting yourself into Monster Market Movers. Guys, if you want that mentor relationship, you want me to be able to help you, you want me to be able to hold your hand a little bit as you walk through this process. And guys, we teach it monthly. Why do we do it monthly? Because you don't get anything in two hours. I don't care what it is in life. You're not an expert. You're not a guru. You're not a master in two hours. You want to become a supreme trader, then you work yourself through the process. And this process, guys, understand the work that goes into this. I am skilled at, yeah, we are Tuesday. Thank you. You know, Francisco, one day I'll get it right and get all three of the things. I'll get the day, the month, and the date correct uh, one day. But thank you. It is today, right? So today, Tuesday, right? Not Wednesday, the 27th. Good catch. So let's do that. Thank you. <laughs> for that Tuesday, June 27th, 
right? So guys, the idea behind it is to be able to help you walk through the process, I can help get you there faster, but you have to take that first step. And if you've not had the results that you've wanted and you like some of the results that I'm showing you here, I mean, guys, I showed you three other trades in the slide set that generated nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about 15 grand on three different trades, an earnings trade, an M trade, and a, a pivot point trade. It generated about $15,000 for that. Uh, so you really wanna spend the time with me to learn how to do this. Eric has been talking with me for, I'm gonna say close to a year about coming on and doing some of this stuff, guys. He finally, he and I finally, um, I agreed to come on and do that because it wasn't me, it wasn't Eric, it was me that was hesitant, just busy in life. Do I want to take on another uh, you know, group of students and, and helping others? And uh, Eric convinced me that it was my duty to do so, and he's right. I've got a skill set that is transferable that I can teach to others, that I have helped others in the past, and if you really want to learn what it is that I do, guys, then you need to hang out with me a little bit, right? So uh, let's see. If some of you are some of you are already enrolled in this, if some of you are already in things like Covered Call Explorer, you may want to contact Lisa about that and see if there's something that she can do to help you out uh, with both of those tools at one time, right? I'm not going to go into Covered Call Explorer here, but if uh, if you are, you know exactly what I'm referring to. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we promised that we would keep you under an hour and we did it. We're all good. So this is the last, this is the only one I'm actually doing for tonight's workshop, but this is the last time I'll be talking about it. The class is tonight. So I got a few things to get done this afternoon and then I will be jumping right into our candidates for tonight. So you've got the best opportunity to be successful starting right out of the box. The expression, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach him a fish, you feed him for life. Well, I'm a firm believer in that, and I'm not a fan of saying, here's this candidate forever. What I think it, what I think Monster Market Movers does for you is it allows you to get involved and get started, and while you're learning, you're getting fed some fish along the way, but you, we're feeding you the fish while you're learning to fish for yourself. All right, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. I want you to have a wonderful and glorious day. God bless, and I will see all of you tonight at the next upcoming Monster Market Movers. Take care now, folks. We'll see you then. Bye.